first off, um, how how do you think Ramaphosa is doing? He points out that Jacob Zuma's rule was nine wasted years, but it's not as if Ramaphosa wasn't around during the during that time. It is true that he was the deputy president, especially in the second half of former President Jacob Zuma's tenure. However, as deputy president, one can argue that he was largely impotent. The power vested in the president, Jacob Zuma, as well as the president, the former president's command of very significant institutions in South Africa, especially, for example, the criminal justice system, the prosecutorial bodies, all meant that he had an astonishing amount of absolute power that left f former Deputy President Sora Ramaphosa largely impotent to be able to effect change within that role. However, now as president of both the ANC and the state, um, the level of authority that he's able to wield for a reformist agenda, in fact, has already been shown over the last year. So. Uh, how are voters going to reward him for the job he's done thus far? I mean, um, do they think he's done well, or um, is it going to be difficult to convince them to give him the time that he wants? Well, already President Ramaphosa has been able to effect significant change, especially with regard to leadership positions at a variety of government and quasi-government institutions. So it unsurpri it's unsurprising that he, f he is quite towering in terms of polls. He towers relative to former President Jacob Zuma, and in fact also relative to opposition leaders like the Democratic Alliance's Musi Maimani and also the economic freedom fighters Julius Malema. So it currently, Joe, the former president or, and, and former deputy president and now current president, Sora Maposa, is polling at twice the levels of popularity relative to the leaders of the opposition parties. And I think that suggests he likely will be rewarded with another term in office, with the ANC garnering more than 50% of the national vote. As far as business confidence, it's largely been kind of a wait and see thing for South African companies since Ramaphosa took over the presidency. What do you think businesses would want to see Ramaphosa do if he were to win um, a convincing mandate? So we describe South Africa's reform process in two stages. Stage one has largely been institutional reforms, in other words, allocating new personnel to the heads of the tax authorities, the prosecutorial bodies, investigative bodies, and also just empowering, for example, the National Treasury and state-owned entities, ministries, with more effective leadership. So we think stage one, over the last year has been largely successful and fairly mature. Stage two now beckons, and stage two will revolve around more orthodox macroeconomic and microeconomic reform approaches. And we think to the extent that if South Africa gives President Ramaphosa this mandate at the elections next week, that will galvanize him within the party and also more broadly to be able to more piercingly push through these reforms, even if he faces some level of opposition from within the ANC or also within the broader tripartite alliance, which, uh, which includes the South African Communist Party, as well as the Labour Federation, COSATU, which typically functions in an alliance with the ANC. So you've recently cut your outlook for South African growth, um, saying the economy probably contracted in the first quarter. Where do you put the chances of a recession for South Africa? I would suggest that a recession is, is fairly low. Admittedly, growth is likely to be around 1% at best, mostly gridlocked by stuttering electricity supply. But in essence, I think we should be looking more medium to longer term and appreciate that 2018 and 2019 are base building years. They, ref they reflect really a turning point and the two years largely 
encapsulating the beginning of a reform process that will yield results more meaningfully from 2020 onwards. So we see in the investment cycle enlivening pretty meaningfully in the latter half of this year with more palpable traction in 2020 and South Africa's growth path beginning to accelerate, as I suggest, with greater business confidence this year, more investment finding traction in 2020 and the growth path showing that level of acceleration. What do you think about the, um, the cabinet after the election? Uh, if, if Ramaphosa were to win, what do you think he does with the cabinet? And do you think Tito Mbwani will stay on as Minister of Finance? So the cabinet will likely shrink and we do think along with the theme over the last year and a bit, in other words where there has been marked and more constructive personnel changes with good outcomes or good suggestion with regard to policy choices and governance. And we think that the cabinet that he forms after a successful outcome next week will echo that theme. I don't think necessarily Finance Minister Tito Mbeweni will continue. I think he has been a uh, clearly effective, bold, and a, and a welcome caretaker with regard to National Treasury over the last couple of quarters. But I think that um, he probably sees this role personally as being temporary, stabilizing purpose, and a new finance minister will probably be incoming. Irrespective of who that is, I'm comfortable that National Treasury has been stabilized and that the public policy choices that National Treasury has suggested, especially in the budget statement that was published in February, will continue to find resonance over the coming years.